Good evening, everyone. My name is Seok Kwon Jeon. I am from Seoul National University, South Korea. First of all, I would like to thank Geotechnica Brazil and Korean Society for Rock Mechanics and Rock Engineering for the organization of this webinar and very kind invitation for me to make a presentation. In addition, I would like to extend my sincere thanks to Dr. Jose Pavon for organizing very successful Latin American Rock Mechanics Symposium last year in Asuncion, Paraguay, and suggesting the webinar series with the Korean Society. It is my great honor and pleasure to make the presentation today. The title of my presentation today is Rock Fragmentation by Blasting and Mechanical Cutting. So my presentation will include the topics listed. First of all, I will uh, introduce the background of rock excavation and rock fragmentation. Then I will talk about the rock fracturing behavior at different strain rates that will be divided into fracturing uh, behavior at quasi-static strain rate, high strain rate, and intermediate strain rate, and finally concluding remarks. This slide shows the research trend of mechanical excavation and uh, blasting excavation of rock, which can be mainly related to mining and civil projects. This is the scope of search for the past 40 years. As you see, there is a significant increase of research since 2000. I believe this is due to urbanization, transportation tunnels, and water conveyance tunnels. And China's contribution is highly remarked in that period. There has been uh, enormous accumulation of high technology and experience worldwide, both in conventional and mechanical excavation. Especially, there have been lots of development in mechanical excavation. They are related to the issues of performance assessment, cutter head design, uh, cutter wear prediction, and so forth. It is worth noting that research on conventional blasting excavation is increasing because blasting excavation is essential in short tunnels, uh, in cross tunnels, and in complicated geological conditions. The key issues in explosive blasting excavation are listed in the slide. The most critical issue is the environmental impact, which is usually connected to civil claims. They include the vibration, air blast, fly rocks, dust, toxic fumes, and more. As the demand for urban tunneling and long tunneling is increasing, the issue is getting more critical. Overbreak and underbreak can be caused by faulty drilling, lack discontinuities, and misuse of explosive amount. They result in damage in excavation walls, cost and time overrun for reinforcement or additional breakage of rock. To reduce the overbreak, and blasting vibration, controlled blasting techniques are used. They can be line drilling, cushion blasting, smooth blasting, brisk splitting, or customized techniques. Fragmentation size control is important because it can affect the following process of mucking, dumping, and hauling. In mine, mining projects, it affects the crossing and grinding process, which are usually very costly. Drilling deviation in color positioning, inclination angle, and depths can affect the advance rate of a break and under break and installation of the support. But this is why drilling usually takes the largest time portion in the tunnel uh, excavation cycle. Timing of detonation also can affect the vibration over break and advance rate. That is why the electronic detonators are lately widely used uh, these days. And proper blasting pattern design is important not to overlap the timing of detonation. The phase stability should be considered depending on the ground condition and advance rate. There are other issues in misfires or unexpected fires, safe handling of explosives, health and uh, safety workers. The key issues in mechanical excavation are as follows. Reducing downtime is one of the most important issues in mechanical cutting. Uh, machine maintenance, cutter change, ground reinforcement, 
Uh, trouble shootings can be the main reasons for downtime. Safe and rapid excavation in difficult ground is critical. The difficult grounds include mixed ground, fault ground, uh, cobbly and gravelly ground, high stresses, water bearing zones, and more. To avoid unexpected delay, phase prediction should be done. It can be done by four polling, geophysical methods, and monitoring while excavation. Machine and cut manufacturing should consider the ground conditions and the potential geological and geotechnical hazards. Assessment of excavation performance and cutter wear amount is important to plan and operate the project. This involves many parameters such as geological parameters, machine parameters, and operational parameters. There have been a lot of uh, researches on laboratory or institute testing and numerical simulation to improve the performance and machine excavation. Uh, cost effectiveness, versatility to ground conditions, and optimal operation of the machine are other issues in mechanical rock cutting. As there have, has been a lot of data acquisition and accumulation, AI techniques are widely adopted for phase prediction and performance prediction. Most work, uh, works are limited to use for a specific purpose, but it will provide a very important tool in the future. The rock fragmentation is a process of excavation of uh, extension of cracks or uh, crack, crack or cracks to the free face. In the process, multiple cracks can be involved and they determine the fra fragment size. The fragmentation can be induced by the creation of new cracks and the propagation and coalescence of new cracks and existing cracks. Inducing creation of new cracks and extension of the cracks can be made by cutting tools or explosives. The interaction between rock and cutting tool can be pseudo-static if the loading rate is very slow, but the interaction is mostly dynamic because the cutting tool is advancing or rotating fast. The explosive blasting is uh, definitely highly dynamic. In this regard, today I would like to talk more about the fracturing behavior of rock at different loading rates and strain rates. The figure on the left-hand side shows the strain time curve of rock under compression. The stress and strain increase in a non-linear pattern before failure at different loading rates, for instance, from one to 10 to the fifth megapascal per second, the compressive strength has different values. In the figure on the right-hand side, the strength increases in a linear pattern in the log scale of the ratio of dynamic loading rate to static loading rate. The increase of the strength was about 15% in this case, but the Young's modulus and the Poins ratio did not change much. The loading rates can be classified uh, into five different states. They are creep, quasi-static, intermediate strain rate, high strain rate, and very high strain rate. The loading techniques are also classified as shown in the figure. In, the, in a typical laboratory compression test, we apply a slow strain rate at, at 10 to the minus fifth to 10 to the minus second per second. In a split Hopkins bar test, in the blasting, the strain rate is greater than one to 10 per second. In the middle between the pseudo-static and high strain rates, the intermediate strain rate can be obtained by hydraulic machines or drop weight. According to a study of my group, the dynamic interaction between rock and cutting tool would belong to intermediate strain rate. I would like to discuss more on this later. The rock fracturing behavior at a quasi-static loading rate. The rock contains discontinuities at all different scales, including micro cracks, foliation, joints, and faults. Intact rock contains cracks and pores, and their behavior under load is of interest. There have been extensive works on the cracking behavior of intact rock. Many workers, uh, many uh, many works were carried out by observing a single crack in rock and artificial materials. On the load, 
the stress concentration is the largest at the crack tips and the crack propagation starts from the tips. At the vicinity of the crack tips, process zone is created. As is shown in the figures, the crack will propagate as a tensile wing crack in the direction parallel to the maximum principal stress, or it will propagate as a shear sure crack in the direction parallel to the crack orientation, depending on the crack inclination angle. The core planar and or oblique secondary cracks can be observed at the crack tips. Due to the geological process, an echelon type cracks are often observed in natural rocks, which are parallel or subparallel. Uh, therefore, the interaction of two parallel cracks and the load were observed in natural rocks and artificial materials. The crack coalescence between the inner, inner crack tips were again observed either in wind crack or short crack mode, depending on the bridge angle. Researchers categorized the crack coalescence patterns into several types. Uh, there is a benefit of using PMMA specimen or transparent 3D printing specimens. As shown in the figure, the cracking behavior of a rectangular shaped or a penny shaped three dimensional inclusion crack can be prepared in a transparent material. The three dimensional cracking behavior, including curved wings cracks or pit petal cracks, were successfully observed with providing a better insight about the cracking behavior of brittle materials. Additional research was carried out on two cracks with non parallel orientations, which can also be observed in natural rocks. Granitic rock, gypsum, and PMMA specimens were tested. Most crack coalescences were tensile and shear sure cracks, and sometimes were a combined combination of shear sure and tensile cracks. The crack initiation and coalescence stress had, has uh, the increasing tendency with the crack initiation inclination angle. In this study, crack type and general cracking sequence was numbered. The shear sure crack were observed after the tensile cracks emerged and caused the specimen failure. And the shielding effect on the horizontal crack played an important role in the stresses acting on the inclined crack. Cracking behavior of brittle materials can be numerically simulated in some ways. Among them, particle flow code analysis provide a nice visual match with the real test. As shown in the figure on the left, the wing cracks and shear cracks were successfully simulated, but the crack initi initiation stress, crack damage stress, crack coalescence stress, and the peak stress did not perfectly match those from the real test. Uh, this may be because the numerical simulation was two-dimensional analysis by synthetic material composed of many circular disks uh, which cannot exactly simulate the three-dimensional physical phenomena of heterogeneous rock specimens such as Hangden granite, which was used in the study. This slide shows the coalescence types of two or multiple crack, uh, multiple parallel cracks in prismatic uh, gypsum specimens. The coalescence types were grouped into four different regions depending on overlapping and stepping. Three types of cracks are observed in the test. They are tensile, coplanar, or oblique shear or secondary cracks. The experiment was carried out for closed and open cracks. For closed cracks, the similar types of crack coalescence occurred, but the stress levels increased as shown in the figure on the right due to the frictional resistance acting on the crack surface. This page shows another example. The specimens were printed with transparent 3DP ink. It has a penny-shaped inclusion crack in the middle of the specimen. The influence of crack inclination angle and crack tip angle on the cracking behavior was observed. The graph shows the relationship between the peak strength and the inclination angle, except in one case, a strength and isotropy due to the crack was observed. The benefit of using 3D printer includes being able to printing identical specimen with at, at, at a very high resolution. And 3D printer uh, can print a very thin crack 
which will close at a high numerous stress. For a closed crack, the coefficient of friction between the two crack surfaces mu, as shown in the equation, can be controlled in 3D printer specimens. This slide shows a nice work on visualizing a uh, short process of loft joint using 3D laser scanning and 3D printing techniques. To simulate the brittle rock uh, properties, the specimen was treated at low temperature. To visual, uh, the visual images of a progressive shear failure were successfully captured. The polymer type 3D printer printing material has a limitation that is not brittle enough at room temperature to simulate the rocks. But many researcher, researchers try to make it brittle by treating it at a very low temperature before testing. Improvement of 3D printing printer materials is anticipated to better simulate uh, to realistic uh, rock properties. Uh, Liu et al. presented a very nice summary of crack initiation and propagation mechanism of brittle rocks. They collected 953 published test uh, data for igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rocks. By fitting all data, they found that crack initiation stress was at about 48% of the peak strength stress. In addition, they found that the crack damage stress was at about 79% of the peak stress. Considering that the mean of, uh, values of crack initiation stress for igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary rocks were 0 0.49, 0 0.48, and 0 0.50, respectively, as you shown in the figure left, they concluded that the rock types had little influence in the normalized crack initiation stress to peak strengths. And they concluded that the material properties mainly affect the variance of rock initiation stress distribution. Different types of specimens were used in the past studies of cracking behavior. Liu et al. presented a very nice review on the studies. The types of material include gypsum, mortar, PMMA, glass, uh, 3D printer uh, printouts, the real rocks, and the methods how to make the pre-existing flaws include the sheets for gypsum specimens, water jet, wire saw, disc saw for rocks, and 3D printer printing. The crack thickness and crack tip sharpness can be controlled in some methods. This slide shows the detecting or monitoring uh, methods of crack initiation and propagation. X-ray scan can be used for specimens that are at a stationary state. Digital image correlation technique, digital photoelasticity technique, and ultra-fast first laser can be used to measure the displacement or deformation at the surface of a specimen under loading. It is surprising that the ultra-fast first laser can capture the surface image at a speed greater than a billion frames per second. Now I would like to move on to the rock fracturing at high strain rate. This slide shows the typical research on it. Dynamic triaxial compression tests were conducted on cuboid sandstone specimens containing multiple parallel flows under different hydro, uh, hydrostatic confining pressures at high strain rate of 100 to 200 per second using a split Hopkins pressure bar. The dynamic strengths and dynamic peak strain exhibited a positive relation with strain rate, while the dependency of dynamic elastic modulus on strain rate is not apparent. The dynamic strengths, dynamic elastic modulus, and dynamic peak strain uh, generally feature a rising trend uh, with a rising hydrostatic confining pressure. The strain rate barely influences the uh, main failure pattern, but increases the break, uh, breakage degree of rocks. The same research group made the additional analysis and tried the numerical work to simulate the behavior. They observed four basic crack types of single flawed specimen. They are cup planar shore crack, oblique shore crack, mixed shore tensile crack, and far field shore crack. Under low actual uh, pre-stress, the specimens generally exhibited a macroscopic diagonal failure pattern and broke into two major fragments. 
But on the high axial pre-stress, the far-field shear cracks and coplanar shear cracks made the failure pattern convert into X-shaped conjugated failure mode. Uh, the uh, most crack types were shear cracks, and the tensile cracks are barely observed, which indicate that the failure mode at high strain rate was shear dominated. Uh, the displacement of the field distribution of the DEM models revealed that the macroscopic single diagonal failure was mainly controlled on the low actual pre-stress, while uh, the X-shaped conjugated failure on the high actual pre-stress uh, is sure dominated. Explosive blasting provides a very high strain rates, and I would like to move on to it. As you are very well aware of, explosive blasting produces a large amount of energy in the form of shock waves and gaseous pressure. Uh, as the explosive column is detonated, the front of the chemical reaction, which is called CJ plane, moves very fast, making shock waves, as shown in the figure in the middle. And it is followed by the gas expansion and pressure. The time sequence and the magnitude of the pressure is plotted in the on the figure at the left hand side. So A means the I mean pressure force shape for high explosive. The B is the commercial explosive. Then uh, in, so uh, shock wave gives A uh, kind of shape uh, wave and then gas expansion present the B curve in the in the figure. According to blasting theory. The rock breakage by explosives involves uh, the action of uh, explosive and the response of the surrounding rocks. The primary breakage and uh, breakage mechanism include compressional and tensile strain wave energy, shock wave reflection at a free phase, gas pressurization on the surrounding rock mass, flexural rupture, shear waves, release of load, nucleation of cracks at flaws and discontinuities, in flight collisions. Processes in the rock around the hole include the fracturing of rock when the pressure of explosion is greater than the dynamic compressive strength of rock. Then, as the pressure attenuates fast, the crushed zone and fracture zone are created in the limited ranges. The tangential stress on the hole induces tensile fracturing. From the blast hole, crushed zone and fracture zone are created. Beyond the, beyond the zones, the stress wave and gas pressure still contribute to the fragmentation. First, the roll of the stress waves. As the compressive stress wave is reflected at a free phase, the phase of the uh, wave is switched to tensile wave due to the big difference of acoustic impedance between rock and air. Then the tensile stress will cause spalling or slabbing from the free phase. Uh, the spalling fractures are parallel to the free phase, and they coalesce with the radial fractures that are created by tangential stress. The slabbing tensile fractures and the radial fractures will contribute to the fragmentation of rock by blasting. The role of quasi-static gas pressure. The radial fractures extends by gas pressurization and they intersect the free phase. It is worth noting that only 5 to 15% of energy is used for rock breakage and the rest of the energy is involved in moving the fragmented rock to the free phase, except for the stored energy, the energy required for sound, light, temperature, etc. The rock fragmentation is influenced by the rock discontinuities. Depending on the orientation and spacing of the discontinuities, the profile of the blasted rock surface can have different shapes as shown in the figure. To observe the radial fractures due to shock wave at the blast hole wall, an experimental work has been carried out. The purpose of the work included experimentally simulate the dynamic fracturing behavior of a rock-like material which is transparent PMMA, obtain a visual information for crack initiation and propagation uh, process in brittle materials on the dynamic loading. Verify the experimental observation with the theoretical equations 
and suggest a numerical approach to simulate dynamic fracturing and the blasting loading. The experiment setup consisted of a cylindrical transparent PMMA specimen with a central blast hole and detonator with 140 milligram of high explosive PDMT, which was custom made and sand stemming. The specimen was 25 centimeter in diameter and 24 in height. The mechanical properties are as shown in the table, which were used in the numerical simulation later. Uh, the experiment was designed to not to break the specimen, but to contain all the uh, induced cracks inside the specimen after blasting, as you see in the video on the right hand side. As you shown in the video and the pictures, as soon as the detonator was initiated, the shock wave crushed uh, the specimen at the bottom and the lower part of the blast hole. Then the gas expansion pressure induced the six main cracks to propagate. The crack shape was semicircular or ear shaped. The video was taken at a high speed camera at the speed of 10,000 frames per second. Uh, two main mechanisms of crack uh, propagation observed, uh, which were induced by shock wave and gas expansion pressure. Shock wave generated cone-shaped crushed zone around the bottom of the blast hole, and gas-driven pressure generated ear-shaped cracks and their propagation. Ear-shaped cracks mainly propagated to radial direction, but some cracks to downward. From the visual observation and images from high-resolution camera, it was observed that there were six ear-shaped cracks formed, which were 60 degrees apart each other. The crack propagation was seized at a certain distance from the blast hole, and its length could be uh, calculated by the equation of stress intensity factor, which is the function of the pressure and crack lengths. The theoretical review was carried, uh, carried out. The blasting a pressure by explosion is usually presented by JWL, Johns Wilkins Lee equation of state, as you shown in the page. The input parameters uh, for DVMP detonator are shown in the table at the bottom. Considering the volume of explosive and blast hole, the blasting pressure on the wall was estimated to be 158 megapascal. In the blast hole where internal pressure applies on the wall, the number of cracks could be est estimated based on fracture mechanics theory, which was a six, at the maximum crack length was calculated to be the 6.3 millimeter according to the given stress intensity factor. Uh, there was a good agreement with the experimental result. The testing results uh, were simulated by a numerical methods. In the simulation, the overlapped domain approach was tried. Lagrangian domain was used to simulate the shock wave crushing, and Eulerian domain was used to simulate the fracturing by gas expansion pressure. The mechanical properties of PMMA and the explosive properties were used as inputs. This is the result of the simulation. The green color represents the Lagrangian domain, and the red color represents the Eulerian domain. They show the eroded elements and the volume fraction of air in Eulerian model as time advanced respectively. The detonation of DVMP created the initial cracks. After the expansion of the gas, ear-shaped cracks began to appear at the space between the empty hole and the sand stemming, followed by propagation in the radial direction. The total number of major ear-shaped cracks was six, and the size and shape of the cracks were comparable to the real test results. As time elapsed, the, uh, I'm sorry, uh, it can be easily imagined that the rock cutting is a dynamic process. In, uh, the interaction between the cutting tool and rock surface in both dragging and indenting mechanism is a dynamic process. For a pick cutter, the tool impacts the rock surface with a fast movement in the dynamic manner. And the irregularity of rock surface even makes it more dynamic 
in this quarter, it is also done in a fast manner. Further, uh, furthermore, in the mixed ground condition, with the appearance of a strength contrast of raw, uneven grain size, and so on, the cutting tool experience more dynamic process than in a flat and uniform ground condition. Here are some notable rock cutting studies uh, to calculate and predict cutter forces of a cutting tool. The force prediction models involve static strength parameters such as uh, uh, uniaxial compressive strengths and Brazilian tensile strengths, fracture toughness, brittleness index, etc. Uh, even uh, though rock cutting is a dynamic process, the dynamic properties of rock uh, have not been considered in the rock cutting studies. Therefore, it was considered how the dynamic properties can be used in the force prediction models. Numerous studies reported that strengths in the dynamic condition would increase significantly compared with the strengths as static condition. In the wide range of strain rate, generally there are two trends exist. Uh, or a gentle increase at the low end and significant rise at the higher end as we see in the graph. The transition between those two trends is located about at the intermediate strain rate, but there are only limited number of studies for intermediate strain rate loading conditions. Some studies have been done to estimate the strain rate of the mechanical rocketing. The first approach was made by a simple calculation from a combination of technical data sheet of cutting machines and a simple rock test on the various loading rates in the laboratory. Taking the information of linear cutting speed of the cutter head and put it in the equation obtained from the laboratory test, it was found that uh, strain rate experience in the rock with that typical loading speed is in a uh, intermediate strain weight range, as you shown in the table. The second approach was made by attaching strain gauges close to the cutting groove in linear cutting test in the laboratory. The test was done both with the pick and disc cutter with the various materials, which is with, they are granite, uh, sandstone, and mixed ground. It could be seen in the uh, graph that the strain rate was smaller than uh, the ISR, which is uh, intermediate strain rate, but by extrapolating the data, the strain rates approached to the level of intermediate strain rate. Uh, it was because the strain gauges were not attached exactly in the interactions part between rock and cutting tools. To accommodate the limitation in the laboratory uh, case, numerical simulation was used. The virtual gauges uh, could be placed right beneath or very close to the interaction spot between rock and cutting tool, and the linear speed of the cutting tool could also be set to the practical speed. Uh, uh, strain rates in all directions were recorded and averaged. Uh, by this approach, it was shown that most of strain rates belong to the intermediate strain range. Thus, with all these approaches, it could be reasonably suggest that the rock uh, cutting process belongs to intermediate strain uh, rate range. In this study, uh, uh, testing methods to obtain rock properties at intermediate, uh, intermediate strain rate was considered. The main feature of the methods is the use of gas expansion energy of a non-explosive powder to generate the impact loading. It basically behaves like a commercial explosive, but it has a lower velocity of detonation and energy. Uh, the non-explosive powder was set together with an initiator in a plastic bag and then was connected to an electric discharger. The dynamic load cell was used and the data was collected by the DAQ system. A high-speed camera was also used to record the rock fracturing during the test. The graph and table shows uh, the uh, uniaxial compressive strengths, Brazilian tensile strengths, and mode one fracture toughness at two different strain rates are quite different. For instance, the UCS at the intermediate strain rate was about two times of that obtained 
at the quasi-static strain rate. The linear cutting test was done with a small linear cutting machine. It was performed on a sandstone specimen with a peak cutter. The penetration depth scenarios were from 5 to 11 millimeter, and the cut spacing varied depending on the penetration depth. The graphs show the cutting force, normal force, and side force acting on the peak cutter. The blue one means the force uh, forces on the first path of cut, and the orange one means the forces on the second path of cut. The linear cutting test was numerically simulated. Uh, the model includes two peak cutters to represent the cut, cut spacing. In the model, two rock property sets were used. One is a, D1 is quasi-static and the other was dynamic input properties. The results from both input properties were compared and validated with a laboratory uh, linear cutting machine test. The relationship between the SP ratio and cutting forces was similar in laboratory test and numerical simulation. But if you take a look at the graphs, numerical simulation using the dynamic properties of rock better predicted the cutter cutting forces obtained in the laboratory test, which was marked on black square symbols. In addition, the specific energy showed the same pattern. So dynamic input parameters generally presented better agreement with a linear cutting machine test. An implementation of dynamic properties can be suggested in the simulation of rock cutting. To overcome the difficulties uh, in obtaining the intermediate strain rate dynamic properties of rock, a simple testing methods uh, could be considered. The slide shows the typical testing methods at the, some dynamic loading conditions. They include a gas-driven loading system, a pneumatic hydraulic loading system, drop weighting test, and pendulum hammer-driven split Hopkins pressure bar. Each method uh, may provide different strain rates, but all in the range of intermediate strain rate. For simple procedure and easy repeat, uh, uh, easy repetitiveness, the drop weight test can be considered to use. There have been researches on actuated uh, undercutting for improved cutting performance. It uses a half of a roller disc cutter to undercut rocks by applying an off-centric rotation of the cutter around the secondary axis. That means the cutter axis wobbles around the secondary axis. It com combined the advantages of roller cutters and drag picks uh, the reference group uh, carried out actual discolored test on softer limestone. The anal analysis on the experimental data showed in uh, general good agreement with the theoretical predictions. Additional experiment was has been uh, carried out. Uh, in the experiment, the small scale actuated disc cutter was used. The size was from 60 to 150 millimeter in diameter. The specimen was a concrete block, which has the strengths of soft or medium rock. The testing param parameters included uh, penetration depth, rotating speed, and uh, linear velocity. This slide shows uh, videos. The uh, slide shows the cutting process of an actuated disc cutter at different angles. Because the actuated disc cutter uh, induces tensile fracture followed by shear fracture, the cutting process is less violent compared to cutting process of a TBM disc cutter. In the cutting test, three orthogonal cutting forces were collected, which were periodic. They showed a certain level of peak values during the cutting. In actuated disc cutter cut, uh, testing, the cutting path is in a helical shape. Uh, so in order to calculate the work, uh, the continuous change in the cutting path and direction of the cutting and side forces should be considered. The analysis show uh, result suggests the better performance of uh, actuated disc cutter than traditional cutting 
by exhibiting lower specific energy at this optimal cutting condition as is shown in the table. So in the table, as you can see, this cutter specific energy was about uh, uh, 35 to 40 megazoule per cubic meter, peak cutter about 31 to 67 uh, megazoule per cubic meter, but uh, ADC, this was a 23 to 41, even though the testing uh, material was a little bit different, it gives some suggestions, uh, so it suggests that lower specific energy for actuated these cutters. Concluding remarks. A rock fracturing fragmentation takes place at various uh, strain weight loading conditions of which the mechanism, deformation, and failure characteristics have been extensively studied. Rock fragmentation at all strain rates can be understood and categorized by the process of crack initiation, propagation, and coalescence. It is observed that the dynamic level of mechanical excavation lies on the intermediate strain rate range. The performance of mechanical cutting may be better predicted by considering rock properties at dynamic strain rates. Rock fragmentation at dynamic strain rates can be better observed using the state-of-the-art testing setups. New technologies using laser sensors, AE sensors, 3D printers, ultra-speed camera, X-ray CT, digital image correlation, reflectometry, shadow graphy, Doppler velocity metry, et cetera, are uh, used in latest studies to enhance our understanding on the rock fracturing fragmentation behavior. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your kind attention.